the stewardship of what God gives us, the gifts that God gives us, is something that I was taught very early by my parents. And, and they, they showed me it, and they told it to me. What they told me was, with regards to the treasure that God gives us and, and the resources that God gives us, that I, I owed a tenth of that upfront first fruits. And I saw them practice that. That was always what they did. But they also showed me, and what they showed me was that God gives us gifts to bless his people and to glorify his name. And we have to have our eyes open to what those gifts are. Uh, and it's not always the kind of gifts that you expect. Um, and so, yeah, it's our treasure. And writing that check is an important thing. And that's, that's a way he gives us to participate in things that we wouldn't be able to, to help with at all. But it's also in uh, gifts that you don't expect. Like, you know, I have this extra vehicle and, and somebody needs it. Or I've got this, I've got this thing. Or I've got this ability. I've got this skill that God's given me. Uh, so that, oh, you're, you, you know, your, your sink is clogged up and, and you don't have money for a plumber, you know. And it's like, you know what, I've, I've fixed that a zillion times. Let me go get my tools. You know, we're going to take care of that. Or like Pastor mentioned, seeing somebody helping somebody fix a car on the roadside because they've done that. Uh, we have gifts like that. Sometimes it's knowledge that we have. It's, it's wisdom that we've picked up along the way. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I've, I've had to do that. I've had to figure out a mortgage or I've had... Or I've had to apply for unemployment insurance. I know what that's like. Uh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I've done that. I, I've got some. And that's not a gift that you were thinking about. That's not a gift that you thought God gave you. And in fact, God gives us gifts that we would not choose. Uh, if you've ever been food insecure and you've had to have food assistance, that didn't feel like a gift at the time. But now when you hear that one in five of our, our people in our community are food insecure, God's calling to your heart. He's giving you a gift of compassion that I want to do something about that because he put me in that position. You know, or if you've had to deal with your parents' finances uh, when they were losing their memory and, and, and th you find out that it's a chaos, you know, th that didn't feel like a gift at the time. But it was a gift that God gave that resulted in compassion so that when your friend is like, Oh my God, I found out my parents haven't paid income tax in five years and, and everything's, you know, it's just, okay, we're going to walk through this. I, I know how this goes. I can point you in some right directions. That didn't feel like a gift, but it was a gift. And those are the kind of gifts that we, we would never pray for God to have us experience. The compassion is a dearly bought gift. And so God would have us have our eyes open to those kind of gifts. How can we, uh, how can we bless other people? How can we... Uh, how can we share the gifts he's given us for other people? So have your eyes open for that. Uh, how God gifts us and the gifts we have, and we say, I have a gift for this, or we see somebody has a gift, it's not always as obvious. How God will use that is not always as obvious as we think it's going to be. And his timing in doing that is certainly not going to be what we expect. Uh, the script that he writes for your, for your gifts may not be the kind of thing you expect. Um, yeah, when I, was, when I was young, my parents said, he's interested in music, let's get him some lessons, let's get him some instruments, they did all of the school band stuff, you know, in, in high school, and, I, and my parents let me set up my uh, cover band's equipment in the living room, because uh, he's got a gift, and we gotta, we gotta nurture that, and it's a God's gift, so let's, let's go with that. And when the time came for me to go to college, and I said, I'm, I'm gonna study music, because it's my gift, God's given me a responsibility for that. I'm going to study that in college. Um, and four and a half years later, when I graduated with a degree in music composition, not in music education, where you know, I would have a job to walk into, um, and my mom asked me, she said, so what are you going to do now? I said, well, I know next week Kim and I are going to get married, and, but beyond that, I, I have no idea. And it was one of the few times I ever saw my mom cry <laughs> because she was scared for me, and I was scared for me. But we knew that God had a, a call for Kim to go teach, and we, we, we were committed to follow that call. And so uh, we went down to Tobias, Nebraska, where she had her first teaching job. And I worked at an elevator, maintenance, a elevator uh, maintenance company. I worked at a brickyard. Uh, I went back to tech school and picked up some electronics. Uh, and eventually she was called here to faith to teach and I got a job at the university 
And during that time, I had a, a Christian band for a while, that, but that never really, you know, went very far. And so life went on. Life went on. We were here in, 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 uh, in Lincoln, and we bought a house, and we had a daughter, and then we had a son. And, uh, and it's great. it was a great life and a great blessing. But that whole gifted music thing just was in my rearview mirror further and further. It's just kind of a hobby now. And in fact, the day came when uh, I had to put the guitars and all that stuff away because I had a repetitive strain injury in my hands and it, I was in pain every day and so I couldn't, I couldn't pick those up anymore. And um, I found a diary entry I made uh, about that time. I'm pushing 40 years old, I mean, about half my life's gone by me. And uh, it was the day that I had taken Ann down to the lead center because the Suzuki groups, the Suzuki violinists were doing a a big event with the orchestra and they were going to do that on the lead stage and I remember standing on the wings of the lead stage and all the musicians and listening to the music and, and looking around and thinking you know I went to school here to further my gift and to follow my gift and uh, Anne's on the stage there but I'll never be on a stage or I'll never be doing music like that for anybody and I don't regret my life my life's been great it's been such a blessing but I just kind of don't get it. I wonder what happened. I wonder if I did the right thing back then with my music. Uh, but apparently, I don't know. And that was the spot I was at. And that was about the time I'm pushing 40, half my life's gone by, and nothing ever came of that gift. But now is the time when Mark Hanneman and Cass McMahon started talking, well, maybe we should have a contemporary worship service. You know, and they grabbed my brother-in-law, Nathan Weinhold, and, and started organizing that. And things went from there and, uh, and I ended up today it looks obvious oh everything that I learned in school all the composition stuff all the things that God had been preparing uh, yeah it makes sense now I'm using those things but there was a long time it was not a path from A to B and so you don't know when God's gonna call you to use that gift so again having your eyes open for what is the giftedness God is asking me to do today what 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 gift do I maybe have that I don't even know I have Sometimes it's just the gift of your time. You know, you realize your neighbor's getting home late with her kids and, and what's going on? Well, I have to work late shifts at the restaurant, we're understaffed. You know, I drive by your kids' school every day. Do you want me to pick them up? I can pick them up. You know, Jesus said, just that cup of cold water. You know, so that's not something you were preparing for or studying for, but today he's calling you for that cup of cold water. This is that gift. You have the time, you're, you, she's your neighbor, this is, this is the path I prepared you to walk. And so I, I would just encourage everybody to, what is the gift God's calling me to? I think maybe the greatest gift he gives us is compassion. So uh, if, I've, if I've had to have food assistance and I see somebody else needs that, but now I have that compassion for them. Um, maybe I can't do anything for them but pray. Maybe there's nothing else. I don't have any tools or money or, or time to give them. Maybe not even somebody I can ever contact. But I know that because of that compassion God has, that gift of compassion God has given me, uh, I can't go to sleep tonight until I spend some time in prayer for, to God about this. Uh, so have your eyes open for those gifts. What are those gifts? And how is God today, what, in this moment, what is the gift God's asking from you? Uh, until uh -huh. I, when you, I was asking, thinking about this, and... Um, and I realized, wow, that was not a, I mean, I mean it's, it's occurred to me while, while I've been doing the ministry here that, oh, yeah, yeah, this is all, God, God put all this together. And now that I'm 60 years old, I, I, there, there are other things where I, I've seen God put his thoughts in. Well, you know, way back then, I wanted to do this. You know. um, way back when, when I was in, in college, I was con considering going to seminary and decided not to do that. For, for various reasons, didn't seem that God's call. And then more recently, I was uh, um, I, I was sitting in church here, and I, I had the thought, well, what if, uh, for the, if you had another 20 good years, would you do go into the ministry if you could? And I thought, oh, I don't know, I, mean, I suppose. And so I started studying Greek and, and, and some other things. The, the day I thought that, though, I walked into a Walgreens store, and I'd been thinking about this, and I just thought, God, you know what? I really have no, I, this does not look like a path to me. But, but I don't know. Well, you're going to have to be really clear. You're going to have to show me. 
if this is something you want me to do. So I'm checking out, and uh, uh, the, the lady behind the counter says, well, how, how's it going today, Pastor? And I said, oh, whatever, you know. And then, I, and then while I was giving her a call, she says, yeah, I forget, where, where are you, Pastor? At? I says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not a pastor. Yeah, I do music at the church, but I'm not a pastor. She said, I said, you know, I thought about it when I was a kid, but, but that never happened. And she turned to look at me and she says, if that's got something God's got for you, he's going to make it clear. And, and I went out and sat in my car and cried because I, I, I thought, what just happened, you know? Uh, and so I, I don't know what, what happens with that. And that's why it makes me excited to see what happened with Daniel and what would happen with Pastor Gary. That late in life, all of a sudden it's, oh, well, not late in life for Dan, but, uh, but you don't know what, what switch in the road God's going to throw you. And so every day have your eyes open. What's that gift that you, you didn't expect? Or maybe that, that desire you had in your heart years ago. Uh, and, and now God's going to bring that to, to, to fruition. He's going he's gonna to do something with that that he prepared you for decades ago. Oh, uh, you know, I'm 60, uh, I'll be 64 here in about a month. You know? And so uh, I, still don't see, uh, I still don't see where a path for a pastoral ministry, but that's something I even want to do. But I, I don't regret having now learned Greek, and I'm working, yeah. on, working on Hebrew, and, uh, and, and God's just using that in my, in my study life. And so, uh, uh, I don't know. I feel like, okay, I, because God's worked in weird ways in the past, I'm going to be, all right, well, I'll, I'll just keep following up these other things, and, and, and I don't see it. And I could be doing, they, they ask uh, people our age to, uh, to be doing crossword puzzles and other things to keep your brain busy, you know, so that you, you, you know, to fight off... Uh, memory loss and stuff like that. I said, well, okay, well, I'm doing Hebrew is keeping my brain, uh, you know, really busy. So I could, I could be doing crossroads. I guess I'll do this instead. God, yeah, you don't know. Hey, you don't know uh, what God's plan. And, and even people who have prepared for, for a ministry, and then God, you know, sometimes sometimes, sometimes God takes them. Sometimes they die. Or, or, or sometimes they say, well, what was that all about? They were only 35 years old. And, you know, and then the fruit God bears out of that, you just... In God's preparation, what he, he plans for us is, is just, uh, it's, it's inscrutable and, and, and it's wonderful. And, and we don't know until the other side, until we're in eternity, what the deal was. So what's the deal, God? I don't know. But I'm going to have my eyes open today. What's the thing today? And nothing. what's the cup, cup, cup of water I can give today? What's the big thing? What's the little thing I can do today uh, in this moment? I, I, I wrote a song recently called uh, Not My Story. Um, and it's on YouTube someplace. But, uh, uh, because so I, I heard a Christian song that says, you know, this is my story, this is my song. And, and, and we, we talk about that a lot, you know, about my story. And, then we, and that's our witness to each other about how God works in our life. But, but it struck me, I thought, well, it's not my, but really it's not my story. You know, it's not my story. God's doing the thing, but this is God's story. And, uh, and we wait to see what it is. And, and, and that, that helps, that helps, because then, because now it's not my story, how am I going to work out my story, how am I going to write my story, but it's, a, it's God's story, and he's writing it, and, and I, could, I can rest in knowing he's writing this story, and I just have to be faithful to, to keep my ears open, keep my eyes open, what's the gift he wants me to use today.